I'm uh, Sardar Soyuz uh, from Boğaziçi University. So today I'll be uh, talking about uh, health monitoring and structural reliability. I will spend most of the time uh, on the tall building uh, topic, but uh, some general uh, con, uh, points as well. So I'll be talking about some uh, soil structure uh, interaction effects and long-term environmental effects. Uh, then updating and damage detection and the link between health monitoring and reliability. So a uh, couple of words on soil structure interaction. So uh, there was a study on a building uh, at University of California Irvine campus. So here you can see that uh, we did ambient vibration, collect data and did analysis uh, to find frequency. Uh, and we saw that there is a decrease during the earthquake, and we know that is a, uh, I mean, expected fact. But uh, there is a permanent uh, shift after the earthquake. So during the earthquakes and after the events, this is expected. Also, we did one uh, study on offshore platform, and also uh, in this study, the main player was soil structure interaction. So I don't want to spend any time on the details, but just giving some uh, details. Also a long-term uh, monitoring. And in that study, uh, there was a decrease over the years. So this was a five-year uh, long-term uh, project. And here you can see the scattering of the data. That is the first thing. So when you do just ambient vibration, just one, once that is uh, not good enough. I mean, here there is a quite a bit of scattering and also decrease over the years. So now uh, I'll proceed to main topic that is the health monitoring and reliability estimation uh, for uh, a tall building. On the website you can see the real-time data but I'll not go to, into detail. So uh, this is a sample data uh, from the building and we did the identification. Then uh, identification for frequency and identification for damping. So we found the viscous damping as 2%. So then did fine element model updating. So the main motivation is what is the reliability, especially during a seismic event, for non-updated and updated model. And when I say updated model, I consider the frequency updating and uh, the damping updating. And uh, here you can see the parameters for example, we started from a basic model. And uh, I guess we always need to consider the engineering judgment. Uh, for example, here, the soil springs. For example, if you just update the material properties, I guess it is not that, uh, I mean, it is not enough. Uh, so for example, you need to consider the soil springs, the surrounding structure. I mean, if you model just the tower and update material properties, I guess it will lead to something else. So uh, soil spring, surrounding structure, and you can see the effect. Uh, and definitely, as a last step, I mean, uh, after we are uh, certain about the structure and after we do our engineering judgments, definitely we do the calibration fine tuning. And then uh, we see that the update model is quite close to the uh, identification results. Then uh, here, also, the same so for uh, the mode shapes. And as a next step, so we do the updating, health monitoring. So what is the uh, benefit of it? So we do some uh, reliability analysis for the expected earthquake motion uh, in Istanbul. So these are three folds uh, in the Marmara Sea. And uh, we have the response spectra for the uh, motions, uh, the mean and the design. Then for these two cases, uh, the reliability or the failure probability, the density function for the updated and non-updated models, they give different results here. For example, for the distributions, if you set a threshold, for example, 1% interstory drift, the failure probability will be different for updated and non-updated models. So, uh, I mean, as a last step in the structure health monitoring flow chart, so 
you are trying to detect damage, you are trying to do fine talent model updating, but uh, what is the link between updating and health monitoring and the reliability? I guess that is the last step and that should be answered. So this is my uh, way of doing that. I mean, definitely there are many other researchers uh, doing similar things, but uh, so we can see the difference between updated and non-updated model for mode shape effect and for uh, damping effect. Here, we are only dealing with uh, viscous damping because we are doing nonlinear time history analysis, so the hysteretic damping is already taken into account, so we are just uh, changing viscous damping, 2% identified, and 5% is the, the, the one coming from the code, I mean, it is the code suggested, let's say, uh, parameter. So, in this context, so doing identification, doing updating, and uh, linking that to reliability, I will present uh, one more example. So, a chimney, we instrumented this chimney in the context of wind and earthquake loading uh, response studies. And again, the story is the same, uh, collecting data, doing the identification for frequencies and mode shapes, and then damping using some other techniques. We do uh, not just once, but I'm many, uh, I'm, we collect data for many times. Then again, so we are done with the, the structure. Now we do a probabilistic seismic hazard analysis for the site, uh, for the known faults. Uh, we obtain the uniform hazard spectrum. I'm not going into details. Uh, so this is the uniform hazard spectrum. Uh, so we do the study for each period. Then we are matching this uniform hazard spectrum using different input motions. Then here again we have the failure probability for updated and non-updated models. So you estimate a failure probability for structure, but what is the actual one if you integrate the health monitoring uh, or the identification results into that. So that is always the question I'm trying to answer. So also we can obtain a capacity distribution and using some classical reliability approaches we can obtain the failure probability or the reliability of the structure. So a couple of more words on uh, this topic. So I started this, I mean, integration of health monitoring to reliable testimation like 10 years ago. Uh, well, I was a PhD student with Professor Shinazuko Professor Frank, and this was a test at University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, so it was damage to different states. So these are the collected responses. So strong motion as well as white noises. So using white noises and linear identification techniques or uh, using this strong motion and using some different techniques like extended Kalman filter, we can obtain the damage. And the question is, what is the damage state you estimate if you just use uh, fine element models? So there is no sensor on the structure, you estimate something. So this is the case most of the time for engineers. And what is that damage state when you have sensor data? So it's kind of a benefit you gain from instrumentation of the structures. So you can see that the damage states are different for each level of uh, strong motion. And at each damage state, we do one more nonlinear time history analysis for update and non-update model to come up with this fragility curve. So let's say there is a bridge, a highway bridge, uh, there is an earthquake, so there is a certain level of damage, but you don't know exactly uh, the level. So using fine talent models and instrumentation data, you estimate the damage. Then what is the consequence of that? So what happens if a major event happens, earthquake happens, for a damage, already damaged structure? So we can use this fragility curve, and we see that the probability of failure is different for updated and non-updated models. I am almost done, so a couple of recent studies uh, in both universe. So we did a forced vibration test, definitely ambient vibration before and after uh, this. So uh, here you can see partition walls. After retrofitting, uh, there was shear walls, and we jacketed the columns, and we have data 
before and after, and during the forced vibration, definitely. We do some work on historical structures, ambient vibration. So I call ambient vibration, uh, if we do just uh, once, I mean, uh, data collection just once. Otherwise, I mean, if we do long-term monitoring, I call it structure health monitoring. So these are just ambient vibration service. So another cold form structure uh, in the laboratory, three-dimensional, two-story. We did cyclic tests force vibration test, and at each damage state, I'm, I guess at three different damage states, we collected ambient vibration and try to see if we can identify the damage level. And uh, a recent work on uh, wind turbine again in Boaz Junior's campus. So maybe we can go a vi uh, for a visit uh, to this site, for example, uh, in the next workshop. So this is very close to Black Sea. So not the main campus, but the under campus. So it's a one megawatt turbine. The uh, main thing is, I guess, we have exertion sensors on the tower, some dynamic strain gauges on uh, some special uh, regions and uh, on the piles. And the last slide is uh, we did uh, a recent work on the Bozci uh, bridge. So there is. Uh, I'm, they are changing the main hangers, so now they are inclined, they are making it vertical. During that time, we did some ambient vibration studies, uh, but the health monitoring, the continuous monitoring is done by uh, General Directorate of Highways. So that's it uh, for my presentation. Thank you very much for listening.